Hi everybody, welcome to Everyday Math Lesson 4.1. Today we're going to be working on doing an assignment with using decimals and word form and number form. This is probably one of my most favorite lessons. I like this lesson because um, there are a couple of little tricks that go along with it, but there are some things that um, just really help make numbers like this visual. I will tell you, on your test for Unit 4, you will need to know how to shade these boxes. So really pay attention to the lesson that we're going to do today. Take notes if you feel like you need to. Make sure that you're focused on what I am showing you for the day. That way you can then use it on the lesson. Okay? So we're going to start on page 114 in your Everyday Math Workbook. And we're going to start today with this lesson using our mental math. So using, I'm sorry, our math message. Our math message today says, write this number in words. I want you to think about what we did yesterday and try to write this number in words. Go. All right, to write this number in words, you're going to start by writing that zero and. Now, whenever a digit really starts with a zero, you don't have to necessarily put that part there. I do just to get in the habit, and that is something that I suggest to my students. Really get in the habit of putting that in there just so you know that the and means the decimal, so you get in that um, routine every time. What number do you see there? I see the number 43, so zero and 43. Now your place value. What place value is that three in? So looking right here, my three is in the thousands. I'm sorry, oops, my bad. It's not in the thousands. I'm a goober. It's in the hundredths place. So your answer for this one, and it's kind of hard to see that, but it should be zero and 43 hundredths. So now we're gonna put it in the place value chart. So again, this goes with our lesson that we did yesterday. I have zero ones. My four is in my tenths column. My three is in my hundredths column and I have zero thousandths. So the way that you do this, and I'm actually gonna use two different colors for this to help you out. I'm gonna use my blue to decorate my tenths. So when I do tenths, remember I showed you yesterday, this is a whole, this is a tenth, this is a hundredth, and my thousandths is tiny, right? So for my tenths, I'm gonna do four longs. One, two, three, four, four longs. Now be careful, you need to color them in. Make sure that you don't go over the outside edge. You need to color neatly. Okay, there are my four tens. Now I need three hundredths. One, two, three. That's how you color in these grids. Now notice that you do have some that are super small. We're going to get to these later in the lesson, but for right now, this one is super easy because it's only tenths and hundredths. These little tiny ones, that's what you do for thousandths. Okay, let's look at this next one. For problems four through six, it says use fractions, equivalent decimals, or other representations to write at least three names for each decimal in the name collection box. So the first thing I can do is I can use words. This number is the same as eight tenths. How do I write that as a fraction? We practiced that yesterday. Yesterday we learned that it is eight over 10. Awesome. What else could we use? Maybe an equivalent decimal. Maybe I could put 0 0.80. It didn't change the value. Same amount. Maybe I could do 80 over 100. Just add those zeros. Remember, we learned that we could do that as well. That's an equivalent name. Right? Um, let's see. What else could we do? Oh, I bet we could use expanded form. Right? 0 plus 0 0.8. Perfect. 
Now we get to shade the grid to show the decimal. I know this is 8 tenths, that means I'm going to use 8 longs. For this one, I'm going to use a highlighter because for me that just is a little easier. I can just do sticks that way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. Again, you have to make it neat. 6, 7, all right, and 8. Now for this one, I'm going to go really fine at the end because I don't want to go over that edge. The reason why I'm very careful, especially towards the end, is because remember, each of these little boxes counts as a thousandth. So if I color one of those in on accident, then my answer would be wrong. So this is extremely important, especially when we have to do it on our test. Make sure that you are very meticulous with how you are coloring. All right? So this is 8 tenths. All right, let's go to page 115. Let's try another one. 0 0.620. How would I write that in words? To write that in words, I would write 0 and 620 thousandths. Six, I'm sorry, zero and 620 thousandths. You also could have said zero and 60. Two hundredths. That also would have been a good way to go. See if you can find another way to write this. Choose one way and put it in the chat below. Well, there are many ways to write this number, so I'm going to write just a couple. 0 0.62 is an option, absolutely. You also could have done 62 over 100 or 620 over 1,000. Those are absolutely ways to do this. All right, 62. All right, this time I'm going to use my blue highlighter for my tenths, and I will use my pink highlighter for my hun uh, hundredths. Six tenths. Okay. So one two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to draw my line right here. I'm going to go really carefully, really carefully. All right, now that I have that last line, I can color this in kind of quickly. Now that I have my last line, I can color this a little faster. Okay, as long as that last line is nice and neat. And I like to use um, highlighters because I like I'm a visual person I like to see the colors and then two hundredths now my hundredths are the little boxes here so there's one and here is two there you go that's how you would do that one all right number six I want you to give me one name for this number go all right, for this one, I could have put zero and 400 18 thousandths. You also could have put 418 over 1,000, 4180 over 10,000, 0 0.4180, that also would have worked. Um, and then something else, let's see, 418 times 1 over 1,000, that also works. All right, any of those options are good. So if I have you rename a number, these are the options that you could do. 
Okay, now let's color it in. This time I'm gonna use my pens because I have to go a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna use green, red, and blue. So I'm gonna use my red for my hundred. I'm sorry, for my tens, tens. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna make that last line very neat so I don't go over. And then the rest, just make sure they're colored in. There's my four, uh, four tenths. Now I'm gonna draw my one hundredth. Now this is where it gets tricky. My thousandth, you have to be very careful. On your test, on your quizzes, you will have to do thousands and it is very, very tricky. So literally I'm gonna have to draw eight of these little tiny boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. You have to be very careful. I'm gonna let it refocus. There you go. If you zoom in, you can see I did leave two that were open. You have to make sure that when you're coloring, you color neat enough. And like, look, I see one that's not colored quite as much as I would like it to. Same thing here, it doesn't look like it's filled in. So when you're coloring, make sure you're coloring neat enough to where it looks exactly like the number you're trying to make. Okay? All right, let's get back and readjust it. Here we go. So that is what we're gonna work on today. So the next little part is we're gonna do some fraction number stories. So this is actually gonna be in another video for you. So your lesson today is mainly gonna be work on the shading parts. The shading can be easy at times, but it also can be tricky. What I want you to do is tell me one thing that you need to remember when you're shading a problem. Give me one hint. What do you think it is? Give me one hint that you're gonna to try to remember. Awesome, I'm gonna check those hints over and I'm gonna share some of the best ones with the class. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about my big hint. All right. So if a teacher, Ms. Gilman, gives you a number that you have to shade, it will happen. Watch what I do. I draw above my number what I'm going to shade. That means I need to fill in six whole boxes two sticks, one square, and one tiny piece. If you do this above your digits, it's gonna help you remember what to shade. This is a really easy way to visualize and make these pictures and the shading so much easier. No matter what the digit is, 0 0.198, you will have one stick, nine boxes, and eight little pieces. Doing this above your number, will help you know exactly what to shade. All right? I want you, the very last question, read this number, type it into the chat, or I'm sorry, type it into your assignment as word form. That is your final answer for the day. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you soon.